Hello everyone and welcome back to the Women's World Chess Championship match between Ju Wenjun and Lei Ting Jae and uh, uh, so far it's been, uh, well it's not been a bloodbath but there were some uh, trading of blows uh, in uh, round 5 uh, Ju Wenjun uh, lost the game, uh, Lei Ting Jae took the lead and then uh, Ju Wenjun retaliated in round 8 and this is now game 12 uh, so if this one ends in a draw uh, then we go into tie break so let's check it out, it's quite a game uh, and let's see if we did get a new world uh, women's champion or uh, does Ju Wenjun retain her title. So pawn to d4, uh, pawn to d5, knight f3, knight to f6 and now pawn to e3. Going for the call system, we have pawn to c5 and now uh, already uh, here you will see some like c3, c4, bishop to e2, but the d counters on c5 is incredibly rare. It's uh, pretty much no one plays it except one player. Alireza Firuzja uh, plays this and he plays it with great success. He defeated some great players like Fabiano Caruana, Wesley So, he defeated Karyakin. Uh, so uh, it, it can definitely be played and now it has been played in a world chess championship match so here we have pawn to e6 preparing to take back the pawn and now pawn to b4 as um, you guys know it's always very important to play it as early as possible we have pawn to a5 challenging the uh, the, the pawn defending c5 and now c3 we have captures captures and now b6 further undermining white's pawn structure here we have bishop to b5 with check and now you have to block with the bishop if you block with the knight and you allow c6 the game is basically over so after bishop to b5 check bishop to d7 uh, was played and now bishop captures we have knight b captures on d7 and now pawn to a4 if you're wondering about c6 now it's not possible uh, unfortunately for uh, Ju Wenjun as bishop captures on b4 ruins uh, all of her plans and then let's say bishop uh, to d2, bishop captures queen or knight captures, knight b8 goes after the pawn and yes you can defend the pawn but after queen c7 the pawn will fall. So it's not possible, we have pawn to a4, now comes b captures on c5 and now pawn to b5, you give back the pawn and now you have uh, uh, two connected pass pawns, the a pawn and the b pawn, whereas black has a passed c pawn. So uh, here bishop to d6 is a known move. Uh, it's uh, I, I think it's also from the game that uh, 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 it's not from the game Alreza played, but it also could be. Yeah, I could just check real quickly. I don't want to trick you guys. Yeah, it actually is from the game Alireza versus Wesley. So uh, where Wesley played Bishop to d6, but here we have Queen to c7, and it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. So okay, uh, Bishop to b2. Uh, the Bishop definitely belongs on, uh, belongs on this long diagonal, but you could also uh, make a case for bringing the Bishop over to d2 to help out with the advancement of the past pawns. So Bishop to d6, we have castles by both of them, uh, and now Knight b to d2. Uh, rook f to c8 and now queen to c2. So of course um, uh, Ju Wenjun wants to make preparations to start advancing the past a and b pawn and Leiting J will uh, of course want to prevent that and start uh, advancing her own past c pawn. So pawn to c4 and now bishop to c3 stopping uh, further advancement and also now preparing to push a and b pawns. Uh, knight to c5 as the square has now been vacated uh, uh, when c4 was uh, pushed and now you, you're looking at knight to d3 but also knight to b3 all depending on what the Ju Wenjun plays. Pawn to a5 and now we have knight to b3. Also knight to d3 looks very strong but knight to b3 uh, comes with some threats as the rook here is hanging uh, and the real question is uh, can you can you play bishop captures on f6? So of course you cannot capture uh, here and win a pawn because then your bishop hangs uh, but uh, the, the real question is is bishop captures on f6 something that you want to do or should you just play rook to a2? So you know, it's uh, definitely uh, a, a personal preference. Uh, someone would uh, prefer rook to a2. Someone would prefer to give up uh, uh, the, the rook for the two pieces. Uh, Ju Wenjun went bishop captures on f6. And okay, knight captures on a1, grabbing the rook. Bishop captures on a1. And now also queen captures on a5. So two pieces for the rook, not maybe the best of deals, but two pieces for a rook and the pawn. Uh, very, very much different because now it's the, the past B pawn which likely will not survive and then uh, you will have to worry about um, Leiting J's past C pawn. So queen to C3, offering a queen trade right away and Leiting J obliges. We have queen captures, bishop captures and now rook C to B8. Going after the past B pawn, knight to D4, defending the pawn and here... 
uh, Leitinj uh, perhaps rushed it a little bit. Um, uh, here you, you should consider some moves like rook to a3, maybe bishop to c5. Uh, but she played pawn to e5, which uh, comes with a very straightforward idea. Get rid of the knight and pick up the, the past b pawn. But it also allows this knight, this beautiful knight to f5 move. And okay, now the bishop is hanging, so you don't have time to pick up the pawn. Uh, bishop to f8, and now bishop captures on e5. Attacking and uh, uh, grabbing the pawn while attacking. Rook captures on b5 and now pawn to g4 and now it's a much much different game uh, maybe the b5 pawn could have been captured without giving up this e5 pawn but okay pawn to g6 uh, getting rid of the knight knight to d4 attacks the rook and now rook to b2 we have knight to b1 you have to bring the knight into the game somehow so knight b1 probably coming to c3 bishop to g7 and we have a trade captures captures and now knight to c3 and now uh, we really enter the end game uh, it's a uh, uh, rook and two knights versus two rooks so basically uh, rook for for the two knights also letting j is still up a pawn she's the only one for the moment with a pass pawn but it's going to be very very hard to um, get those knights uh, off of those squares so rook to a5 defending the d5 pawn but now just rook to d1 preparing to move this knight and go after at the the d5 pawn uh, even you could capture with rook and knight but also you could just maybe bring the knight to e2 then to f4 and then uh, pick up the pawn uh, pick up the pawn clean so rook to b6 and now knight d to e2 uh, we have rook to b3 sorry rook to b3 and now uh, a king to g2 waiting uh, with the capture on d5 uh, we have pawn to h6 and now king to f3 uh, juvenjum first brings her king uh, closer to the action we have pawn to f6 and now rook to c1 now the knight is defended and this knight can now move to f4 to go av uh, after this uh, pawn here and while you could stop that by playing g5 it's further weakening of the position then the knight comes to d4 then to f5 with check and so on uh, so after this rook to c1 king f7 we have knight to f4 and now pawn to d4 now the the pawn would fall on d5 uh, so you have to advance it pawn to d4 and e captures on d4 at least you've ruined white's pawn structure a little bit instead of one pawn island now Ju engine has two pawn islands and maybe the d pawn will be a, a bit weaker but i mean with those knights there it's hard to uh, to say pawn to g5 chases away the knight knight back to e2 we have pawn to f5 g captures and rook captures on f5 with check king to e3 and now pawn to g4 grabbing more squares here in front of the white king knight to f4 and now rook back to b8 we have pawn to d5 the pawn is now marching forward and rook to f6 stopping pawn to d6 we have rook to c2 and uh, not allowing any uh activity for the for the black rook on the second rank and also maybe uh, shifting the rook over to the d file rook to a8 and now knight to b5 uh, we have rook to b6 now, putting pressure on the knight, and just knight back to d4. We have rook to a3 with check, and now king to e4. It's great to have an active king, it's uh, uh, sometimes not so great to have a too active king, but uh, the, obviously the king is uh, very active here, not too active, so it's perfectly fine. Pawn to c3, uh, letting j also finds a way on how to advance her own pawn, and now of course the, the idea is rook to b2. So how do you prevent this? Well, there are two ideas, you could, you could just play knight to d3 and stop rook b2 or you could play knight e2 and then just go after the c3 pawn and uh, uh, Ju Enjun, uh, uh, uh decides for the latter uh, we have rook to b2 as the move now has been uh, made possible and king to d3 just defends the rook and the problem is if you trade uh, look at this uh, rook captures knight captures now you do whatever doesn't really matter knight captures on c3 uh, two knights and the pawn uh, for a rook uh, of course this is completely winning and the, that pawn will win the game so she decides not to trade she goes rook to b1 and now knight captures on c3 rook to h1 goes after the h pawn but now pawn to f3 with the rook nicely guarding the pawn along the second rank g captures on f3 knight captures and now rook to f1 we have knight back to d4 and king to e7 so of course um, while the position is objectively winning uh, uh Ju engine will uh, still have to work very hard for her meal as uh, this is if uh, Leiting J loses this uh, she loses the chance to become uh, the world champion king to c4 uh, we have rook to f4 now pinning the knight and rook to b2 we have rook to h4 going after the h2 pawn if the rook ever moves uh, and now uh, we have rook to b7 with check we have king to f6 and now rook back to b2 just defending the pawn we have rook to a8 and now king to c5 now the king wants to come to c7 
7 and just escort the pawn to victory. We have rook to h3 going after the knight, knight c to b5. We have rook to e3. Uh, and pawn to d6. Little by little, the pawn advances further. King to e5, and now knight to c6 with check. We have king to e4, and now pawn to d7. Now d8 is coming, and there is, of course, nothing you can do to stop this. Rook to d3 was played, but now knight to d6 with check. Checking the king and also preventing the rook from guarding that d8 square. King to f4 was played, and now just rook to b8, uh, rook to b8, cutting off this rook's uh, uh, reach to the d8 square, and he was in this position. On move 62, that uh, Leiting J resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, so really, really uh, tough break for her. Uh, she played a, a very nice uh, a World Chess Championship match. Uh, uh, for those of you who have been following from the beginning, she defeated some very, very strong players in the Candidates tournament. She uh, uh, defeated Anna Muzichuk. Uh, she defeated Maria Muzichuk. Uh, she defeated Tan Zhongyi in the finals and then uh, she was able to qualify for, for her World Chess Championship match against Zhu Wenjun and she actually took the lead in game five and uh, well if only she could have uh, drawn all of them until the end but uh, Zhu Wenjun retaliated in game eight and also now won uh, game 12 which makes Zhu Wenjun uh, well she, she retains her title and she stays the women's world champion now for those of you who enjoy me uh, when I uh, who enjoy when I uh, finish the games uh, the reason you resign here is because okay d8 is coming everyone can see that and okay maybe you can give a check rook to c3 check but now king d4 now both of your rooks are hanging and when you defend them uh, the easiest way to win is not even by advancing the pawn to becoming a queen right away it's actually knight to e5 chess is sometimes funny like that you just take away the square uh, so no checks are possible uh, if this check is given then the rook hangs and basically it's a, a mate in few moves you don't even need a queen to, to win this look at this rook to, rook to e3 or anything you go after the knight here rook to f8 with check after king to g5 you play d8 and bring a bishop into the game you don't even need a queen check king h5 and rook to f5 with a beautiful checkmate so sometimes you know when there's a lot of stuff on the board you're you're looking uh, at the position and you're you know how, how do i win this in 20 30 moves when uh, in reality uh, the uh the end of the game is much much closer than you think uh but yeah of course um uh, Leiting J did not want to uh, see this uh, finished on the board. She had enough uh, and uh, she decided to end the game. Here he, she shook uh, Ju Enjun's hand. And yeah, for those of you who uh, have been following it, you can also enjoy the, uh, the uh, discussions uh, after the game. Uh, and uh, yeah pretty much it I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it it was a uh, very nicely played uh, not not a not a lot of bloodbath but there there was definitely some blood uh, and uh, it uh, I don't think they've um, uh, in all the games that were played aside from the winning ones game 5 8 and 12 uh, there were no missed chances there were maybe possibilities of improving your position slightly but no one really made any any uh, huge errors uh, uh, throughout the entire 12 games uh, so yeah uh, that's the game I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoyed it big congratulations to Ju Enjun on uh, uh, defending her world uh, chess champion uh, title successfully uh, I would like to thank uh, bulletchessthriller.com uh, Ustav Parak, Gage Wendland, uh, Gary Chomuk and Rod Hill for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and I will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world so thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day